Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Bobby. Coach Bobby here. It is uh, January 2nd. This is a late um, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody out there. Uh, Going to talk quickly tonight about um, New Year's resolutions, right? And how to stay on point, how to stay on tack, tact, track, how to stay on uh, schedule and how to stay motivated and inspired and all those things. All right, because because many of you probably have have vowed, have um, committed, recommitted to getting in shape. One of your things on your to do list on your uh, 2019 uh, resolution list is likely um, to get in shape, to eat healthier, to work out more, to uh, do all the things that you probably uh, said you would do in 2018, 2017, 2016, and so forth. So um, the good news is that you are not alone. The good news is that many people, uh, most people at some point um, throughout the year, uh, usually at least on the first of the year, um, and then a birthday may be, anniversary, uh, time to go to the beach. There's, there are several moments throughout the year, uh, the first of which is often January 1st, where you feel like you want to change things up. You want to start being different and living different um, and being healthier. So um, you're not alone. That's not something that um, is obviously rare. We all kind of go through that. So I'm going to give you guys some, some from the heart tips from the heart pointers uh, that I hope will help you continue and go further maybe than you did last year, further than you did the year before. And hopefully something uh, you'll hear something from me today that will encourage you uh, and help you to uh, keep the momentum going this year where maybe in the past you couldn't do it or didn't do it. All right. So first and foremost, let's let's. Uh, understand that uh, being in shape, uh, being fit, uh, being healthy is not easy. And you know that it's not easy. Uh, being healthy and being fit requires um, a, a um, going against what most people around you are doing. You see, I talk about all the time how our ancestors had to be in shape. They had to exercise every day. They had to go and get their water from the stream. They had to hunt and gather their food. They had to build their own homes. Um, and as far as eating, they couldn't eat in abundance the way we do. They had to eat in a finite amount of time after they hunted and gathered. They didn't eat extra, right? They hunted or killed or gathered. What's up, Lawrence? Uh, only what they could eat. So by way of how how they lived by way of how most animals, all animals live, they had to be in shape. Now we live in an age where that's not the case. So because of technology, because of industrialization, because of modernization, we have um, the ability to relax, enjoy life, and move minimally, right, and eat abundantly. Right, those are those are two things that that's that that are a recipe for obesity and a recipe for bad health. Right, the abundance of 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 leisure and time and the abundance of food. And so, when you embark upon a a healthy adventure, a healthy um, um, road, it's not easy. Right, it's not easy because everybody around you wants you to go out and have drinks, wants you to enjoy um, cake and cookies, wants you to relax and 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 not sweat. You know, they all want to do that, and and because we really don't have to, we have to create almost false or artificial reasons to be in shape. Right, and that's what it comes down to. Everybody who you know who's fit or in shape has created some reason some reason that's real to them, but but artificial to, to everyone else, uh, but they've created some real need to be fit. So the first step is to figure out what that need is for you, 
right? And it might it may it may take some hunting, it may take some some seeking and some thinking and some evaluating to find something that's gonna resonate with you personally. For me, I, you know, my brand has always been somebody who is in shape. I, I played football, American football, 20 years ago, and and I continued exercising, and it became part of my brand. And so now, uh, even though I really don't need to work out, there's no need for me to work out and be fit other than health. Um, for me, I want to be that that superhero to my daughter. I want to be a guy who can train and, and work out with my son. I want to be somebody who motivates and inspires people. So even before I was doing fitness as a as a as a business, um, that was my brand. Even in finance, I wanted people to look up to me as somebody who was who maintained health and maintained fitness as part of his life as a priority in his life, even even while I had obligations in, in work and children and marriage. So you have to find something that's going to keep you driven throughout the year. Because what's going to happen is right now you have a fitness seizure, I call it. You have this, this, this want to be in shape. Right, I call it a fitness seizure where all of a sudden you want to be in shape. It might be you at, you know, sitting down watching television, you see an infomercial, it might be your birthday, it might be New Year's Day, whatever. There's gonna be several moments throughout the year where you have this fitness seizure. And you're you're driven and motivated in that moment to get healthy. Right. You might go out and join a gym or buy some equipment or buy some running shoes or or empty out your refrigerator and go buy all, all healthy foods or commit to a keto diet or do a, a detox, you know, these moments come to all of us. The trick is you have to find something that's going to sustain you once that seizure goes away and it will go away, right? Once you realize that getting up at 6 a.m. isn't that fun anymore, once you have your first soreness or your first pulled hamstring or once you have, you've had broccoli and chicken breast for a week, that seizure is going to end, right? And if you haven't reached your goal in a week, <laughs> which you haven't, um, that feeling goes away. And so you have to have something that keeps you motivated. And you have to go into it and embark upon this journey knowing that that's going to happen, right? Knowing that that's going to happen. I always equate it to a relationship that you have with someone else, a, a man or a woman, right? The ones who have lasting relationships with their husband or a wife or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, they realize as soon as they start the relationship, that this feeling of, ooh, I'm in love and it feels good, that's going to subside. It won't go away, hopefully, ever go away, but it won't be as the same euphoria you feel when you're dating somebody. And so those people who go into it with, with, with naive outlook and, and think that's going to be the case forever, they end up breaking up and finding the next euphoria to follow. Right, those who are who are mature about it understand that 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 initial feeling goes away, and you have to build a lasting relationship based on other things, based on a true commitment, based on understanding, and and based on shared values and things like that. So the euphoria you feel with your relationship with your body is the same thing. When you first start out, it always feels good. You always want to go and 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 get right into it, but that's gonna die. That's going to subside. So the ones who are successful know that's coming, right? They have a long-term approach in mind and they know, look, right now I'm into it. I'm going to ride this wave, but I'm going to stay with it after that wave subsides, after that euphoria comes down, all right? So the first thing is to understand that that's going to happen and begin to look around and, and try to find things that are going to keep you going to the next fitness seizure, the next health seizure, right? So create something, you know, maybe it's it's you really want to be um, healthy for your children, right? Or maybe you really want to get back to the size you were when you got married so you can feel attractive for your husband or for your wife again. Or maybe you want to be, um, make somebody jealous or make somebody upset or make somebody look up to you and admire you. Right. Or, or whatever it is, you have to find something that inspires you. Right. And it sounds corny and it sounds cliche and it sounds like like it's a lot of work. But believe me, it's an, it's almost impossible to go through the grind that is necessary to be fit and be healthy if you don't have something. 
right? There are people who want to run a marathon and they train for that, right? And they envision, you know, crossing the finish line. There are people who want to who wanna do a fitness competition or a bikini competition or a bodybuilding competition just one time or two times. And they envision themselves on stage getting the medal and that carries them, right? These are all, or someone might, might want to try it out for a basketball team, right? Or try out for, for something or, or, or a cheerleading team or a dance team, whatever it is. It's something that's motivated, made, motivates you and it's artificial, it's not real. You're not trying to build a house. You're not trying to hunt and gather food. So it's an artificial need that you create that's gonna keep you driven and motivated on this path to fitness. You have to do it. If you don't do it, it's gonna be impossible, right? So when I, even when I was working, uh, as, a, as a financial executive, I would imagine myself in suits and looking good. So when I was training, I would imagine myself going into a boardroom and commanding a presence, right? That, that's what drove me, right? So I was done playing football. I couldn't use that you know, for, for 10 years. That was my, that was, that, that's what drove me. I didn't, I didn't enjoy working out or exercising for working out sakes, but I, but I knew I wanted to play football in the National Football League. So that drove me. Right. And when that was gone, I had to find something new. So then, you know, initially it was trying to look good for, 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 for females, right? And for my wife, you know, eventually. But when, when that when that passed and I be and I, I was married and had children, then it became I wanted to look good in my suit. So when I would work out, I would envision myself walking into a boardroom looking looking fit in my suit and inspiring people around me who were in twenties and thirties and I was going into my forties that they could still manage to be fit and have a career. So that's what motivated me, right? It was corny, but it was personal to me. So maybe it's, again, maybe it's you want to be sexy again for your for your husband or for your wife. Maybe you want to uh, make your daughter or, or, or son proud. Maybe you want to be able to, to work out with your son. Maybe you want to, want to try out for that bodybuilding. Whatever it is, you have to find something, guys, that's going to motivate you, right? You got to find it today. But this drive and passion you have, to be better, this thing you wrote down and put in your refrigerator, this Pinterest article, all these, all these memes, all these things that you have that that are that can carry you on January second are going to begin to subside and die on January fifth and January tenth. So you have to, in the meantime, begin to find something that's going to push you for another month or another six months or another year, right? Because that's what's going to carry you. So the first step is to, is to go into this journey knowing that there's going to be a time when you don't love it the way you love it right now. You don't, you're not driven to be fit the way you are right now, right? So know it, if you go into it knowing that, you're not surprised when all of a sudden you wake up and the alarm goes off and you're like, man, I don't want to go work out. I wanted to go to work out January 2nd. Now it's January 10th. I don't want to go work out. I haven't lost any weight. So if you know it going into that, you're not surprised by it. And if you continue to look or begin looking for things that are going to drive you, right? And you'll find something because when you wake up, right, there's a reason that you started this journey to begin with, right? And and likely it wasn't just for health, right? That's not, a, sadly enough, that's not a motivator enough for us to want to be fit. So something made you want to do it. You don't feel attractive anymore. You don't, you know, you don't feel comfortable in your clothes. You feel tired going up the stairs, Whatever it is, something drove you, right? Search and find what that, what the meaning behind that is and what's going to drive you to be better, okay? So that's the first step. The first two steps is realize it's going to go down. This euphoria you feel now is going to subside. And number two, begin to find something. Begin to think about, meditate on it, read, look around, find things, find something to, to keep you driven, to keep you motivated, all right? That's the second step. Third step is I want you guys to begin to surround yourself with, with things, uh, re reading material, watching material, real life people that are gonna motivate you to keep going, right? So in those times when you wanna stop, you wanna quit, if you have somebody who is also on the same journey with you, an accountability partner, if you will, then that'll keep you motivated and keep you driven, right? I like to read all the time. I've, I've been doing that f for 30 years, 20 years, right? About finance, biographies, people who are doing things. Now you can find people 
in all walks of life who have a fitness oriented mindset, right? So you don't want to be a bodybuilder. Maybe you don't want to be a model, but there are people around that you look up to actresses, actors, you know, business people who have at their forefront of their, of their brand fitness. So if you follow them, Right. And, and, and by way of you admiring and 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 being inspired by them, you begin to to also gravitate toward the fitness and health that they embody. Right. And it's not hard to find with the Internet, with with Instagram, with Facebook, with 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 audio books, with real books, with magazines. Look around for people that inspire you. Again, and you you don't have to look for people who are fit necessarily, but if you continue to, to look for people who you admire, you'll begin to understand that they have as part of their 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 brand, their lifestyle, a health and fitness regimen that you can begin to embody and emulate. Okay? Because you'll find, you know, quite frankly, that many, many, many times the correlation be, be between success and in any field or endeavor is closely related to, to how people look and feel about themselves, right? Their health and fitness regimen is closely tied to the success they have in entertainment and sports, obviously in sports and music, whatever. You'll find the correlation is very strong. So as you begin to look around and go more in-depthly into people that you see on television, that you read about, dive into their lives, right? Begin to follow them on Instagram or Facebook. Begin to understand and look and see that they these people embody a healthy lifestyle that you can begin to embody. But you have to bring those people to you, right? The law of attraction says that if you continue doing that, you begin to feel it and you begin to, to have, have the same endorphins, the same um, uh, spirituality that pushes them to greatness, right? In their, in their careers and in health and fitness, right? So once you understand that Upon embarking on this journey, there's going to be a time soon afterwards where that feeling is gone, right? But if you, number two, if you begin to look around and find things to, to strengthen your resolve to be healthier, right? Things to attach yourself to, to attach a goal and a mindset to, and then begin to find people around you, people you look up to, people who inspire you, people around you locally, then you can have them be part of your family, part of your tribe, so to speak, to push you and motivate you and inspire me. And by all means, you can always use me to push you and motivate you, right? On my Facebook page, on my Instagram, reach out to me via message, uh, call me, me, message me, email me. I could be part of that tribe for you, but you can't do it alone, right? You can't do it alone. Right, because there's gonna be a time when when you feel like, oh my God, my family wants to eat this, my family, you know, is is not encouraging me the way I, I want them to. You don't need them to, not yet, right? This is your dream, right? Own it. It's your <clears throat> your dream. <clears throat> so, but you can find people close by via the internet, via social media, via books, via television, via audio books. You can find people to motivate and inspire you. All right. So do that. Do those things, and then take it step by step, day by day, right? Goal setting is important, right? But the right goal setting is more important. I don't really believe in, in, in goal setting with goals you can't control directly, all right? So I don't believe in saying I'm going to lose 10 pounds by February 1st, right? Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to squat 400 pounds in three months. I don't believe in goals like that. I don't, what, what I believe in is, is, is understanding and being realistic about the steps I need to take in order to get to that goal, right? If I believe I need to eat um, clean, whatever that is, whatever that means, uh, you know, my definition is different, but whatever you believe the definition of eating clean is for 30 days, and I, and I believe I need to eat um, you know, a certain way and fast a certain way and train, you know, four or five times a week. If I believe that those are the steps necessary to get to 10 pounds loss in 30 days, then my goal should be the four days of working out and the eating clean for 30 days. That should be the, I can control that, right? So when I, when I was playing football, that's how I, I set my goals up. I didn't say I wanted to make all conference or I wanted to have, you know, 
10 interceptions. I had that as a, as a, a visualization, but I always quickly broke it down to what does it take for me to do that, right? And for me, it was getting up at 5 a.m. every day to go lift. It was coming home and getting my getting my nap in. It was it was eating my protein and 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 my carbs in the right times and the right amounts. It was resting. It was stretching. It was all the things that I knew I had to do in order to be all conference, in order to be a better football player. And I could control that. And at the end of the day, if that didn't work, I could do two things. Number one, I could feel good about who I was. Because if, if I did the steps necessary and it didn't pan out, I can't control that. But number two, I could change and alter it, right? I could say, okay, you know what? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not getting where I want to get, so I'm going to change. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get more rest. I'm going to lift more or less. I'm going to do these tweaks in order to get to where I want to get to, right? And then change it. So if you, if you set as your goal... Right to lose twenty pounds, or to lose you know ten pounds, or to or to bench press whatever, uh, that that sets you up to fail, because because number one, as I said before, you can't control that. You can control the steps to it, but you can't control the outcome. And number two, every day you wake up, right? There's nothing to do today, no goal to meet today, to feel good about. Right. If my goal is to lose 10 pounds by by February 1st, tomorrow morning when I wake up, I have not met that goal. I've lost. Right. On on Friday, when I wake up, I likely have lost. I'm over two. Right. Two days, two losses. Right. Whereas if my goal was I'm going to work out every day for the next five days, take two days off and then do it again. Now, tomorrow when I get up right, and I go work out, I come home, I immediately check it off. I win. I'm one for one. Right. Next day, I do it again. I go up there. I work. I work out. I come home. I check it off. I'm two for two. Right. That gives you the right mindset. That gives you a positive mindset, and it feel it fuels itself. If you wake up every day and you're not at ten pounds lost yet, your mindset shifts to negativity. All right. You might think positively if you're going in the right direction, but you still haven't achieved that. Right. So it's a, it's a, okay. I'm there. I'm getting better, but I'm not there. So you haven't won. By setting up these micro level controller goals, they call them not a goal, a controller goal, controllable goal. By setting up controller goals, now you can control every step of the way, right? And if you realize throughout the process that what you set as your controller goals is not doable, then you change that and realistically change the, 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 the long term goal. Right, so if I said I'm going to Hawaii on February 2nd, and by February 1st, I want to lose 10 pounds, that means I need to work out five days a week. If after the first week, I realize I have a project due, right, in two weeks, halfway through my goal, I, I, I realize I can't go every day to the gym. Now I'm, like, now I'm like telling myself, I can only go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That means realistically, I need to change the end goal, right? I can't, I, I can't set myself up for, for failure and, and leave the 10 pound goal there and cut my workout time in half. So by setting up these controllable goals, I'm able to win every day or win often enough to keep momentum, but I'm also able to alter, right? Based on what I can do, based on how it's going, and then change the, the either the location of the long-term goal, make it further out if I have to, or change the number or the goal itself, so that I can win, because it's all about winning, right? And then if you set up, you know, again, I'll go through it again. Number one is we have to make sure we understand going into it that there's going to be a time where we don't have the euphoria. That's step one. So so on January 2nd, we feel great about our goal, right? About going keto, or about training with this new boot camp, or about this new orange theory, or about whatever it is. We feel great about it. But after a week, we won't feel as great about it. But if you know that going into it, you can deal with it. But right? if I know going into a relationship that right now I feel great, ooh, it's fun, it's, you know, we, we, we're, we're all holding hands, we're doing this. If I know that, that that's going to subside, but it'll be replaced by a more foundational love, I can deal with it, right? So go into it knowing that. But go into it with the understanding that you want to find something to hold on to. Right. When you when you're dating somebody, you want to find other things other than beauty and physical appearance to like about the person. Right. Their interests, their intelligence, their spirituality, all those things will replace 
the loss and euphoria that you have in the first two weeks of a relationship. The same is true for your training, right? You want to replace that euphoria with a real need to be, to be healthy for something. Find something that's going to push you, right, when you get to that point of, of, of loss and euphoria, right? And then begin to figure out, okay, now I'm going to create real controller goals, real things that I can do periodically, Every other day, every day, every whatever it is, every week, things you can control. I'm gonna go to the gym three times a week, right? I'm gonna make sure that I do I do squats, you know, twice a week with heavy weight. I wanna get to I wanna I wanna increase my squat percentage by five pounds every every two weeks, right? You can control those things, right? Don't say I'm gonna lose 20 pounds and have that be the only goal you have. Because every day you wake up. You, you're going to be at a point where you're not there yet. And, and two weeks in, you're going to get frustrated. So, so you, you can have that as the long-term goal. Lose 20 pounds, fit into your high school dress, whatever it is, bench press, 315. But move it down from that and think about it and be honest with yourself as to what the steps are to get there and do those steps. Have those steps be your goals, right? I mean, when I was playing football, I would lay out, this is what I'm going to do. Right? This is January 1. I can't wait for January to come around. I was so, I love training for football season more than playing. But I, I, would, I would list it out. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to drink, you know, protein shake every day at 12 o'clock. I'm going to get up and run Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'm going to weight train every day. I'm going to do chess, you know, this day. I had it all mapped out, right? I had a, a in my mind, I had that I wanted to be 185 pounds and bench press 300. 30 pounds and run a four four forty yard dash. I had all those things in my head in my head as a dream, but my goals were itemized. Like what is it gonna take for me to run a four four and a forty yard dash? What is it gonna take for me to weigh 180 pounds by the time football starts? What is it gonna take for me to to bench press 330 pounds? I had I had the steps written down. Right, and every day I woke up, and every week I, that I that I went through, I can sit there and write out and tick off the things that I finished, that I did, right. And then looking back, if I look back after you know after a month, I can see what I did and didn't do, and be honest about it, right. I said I wanted to do this, but I went through my list and a lot of open boxes, right, a lot of unchecked boxes, right. So now I can be honest with myself and say, look, I either need to change my goal or change my behavior. Right? We have goals that don't match our behavior, right? And, and by having just a goal out there, we're not, we're not forced to be accountable to ourselves for the behavior. That's the, that's the biggest problem. We don't, we don't create the itemized checklist that make us accountable for our behavior. We all want to lose weight. We all want to be lean. But if that's just a goal and it's out there and you never have to sit down and do an itemized checklist, on a, on a weekly, a monthly, even daily basis, then you're never forced to be accountable to you for what you did and didn't do, right? So you got to do that this year. So this year's going to be different, right? You have your goal. You wrote down your, your list of what you're going to do. Now, realize the things you really want to do. And you will know next week what you really want to do because half the shit is going to fall off, all right? The shit you really want to do is still going to eat at you. All right. So next week when it's eating at you, you will know, look, OK, now I've been at it. I've been into it. Now I'm beginning to, you know, it's beginning to subside a little bit. I have to start looking around for things that are going to drive me to be fit, to be healthy. Right. Find people in, uh, that, that you look up to, actors, singers, you know, whoever, social media, people you look up to and 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 mirror them, emulate them, find out what they do. Let them motivate you. There's enough content, guys, out there that's not these stupid-ass cartoons and stupid videos. Find something that's going to help you and push you and motivate you, either directly as somebody you know in person, like Coach Bobby, or somebody you see on the internet or read about or watch on television. Find something to push you through those moments and begin to create this list of ways you're going to get better, right? And do it in steps, in increments, right? I'm going to drink less soda next week. I'm going to drink less beer next week. I'm going to, I'm going to walk more. I'm going to, I'm going to begin to work out two times a week 
So you do these things, right? You set up these these, these micro uh, improvements and these these incremental micro steps towards your goal, and you begin to have these small wins every day, every week, every month, until eventually you get to your to your to your goal, right? And if you do that, I promise you, this year will be different than than last year's and the year before. And this year you will you will you will gain momentum. And by the time March hits, you won't be rushing around for summer, right? Rushing around to get in shape for summer. You will be there. You will be there, right? And now to be just fine tuning, and then you won't you you can't wait until to January of twenty of twenty twenty. Wow, twenty twenty, because now you understand how it works, right? Thanks, Lawrence. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, but you all have it in you, right? And again, it's not your fault. Don't feel bad about it. Um, especially in fitness. I mean, it's easier so in some ways to, to meet your goals and be driven financially, right? You know, career wise, because there is in some ways a real need for that. We do have a need to provide for our families, right? The health and fitness thing is hard because again, there's no real need to do it. There's no real need. I mean, I mean, we, we want to be healthier, kind of. We want to look good, and feel good, kind of, but there's no real need. So we have to create it. We have to understand the challenge, right? Hey, Carrie, understand the challenge of being fit. Be okay with that, the challenge of it. Don't be okay with not being fit, but be, be okay with understanding that it's natural, right, for it to be challenging. We don't live 300 years ago or 400 years ago. Where we had to go get our own food and hunt our own food and build our own homes. It's different now. Right. So we have to create a real need to do that. Right. You know, spend time with yourself. Write down ideas and thoughts about why you want to be fit, about what it means to you to be healthy, to look good and feel good. Right. Make it personal. Right. No one needs to know why you're doing it. I don't give a, I don't give a shit what, if people know why I do it. I do it because I feel good walking around with my shirt off. So what? So what? Right? I feel good knowing my wife still finds me attractive. So what? I feel good knowing my son can play basketball with his daddy and not the boy down the street because I can't because I can't play with him. Right? I feel good knowing my, my daughter is proud of how her dad looks and the boys around her are are would think second, think think twice about talking to her. Right? Find something for you that motivates you and drives you. Right? Because right now you have this this nugget, you have this 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 euphoria about being fit, we all do, right? But in about a week, that's gonna subside for everybody, even me. So you have to replace that, like a relationship, replace that initial euphoria of holding hands and kissing and, and ooh, I love you. Replace that with a real genuine interest in your in your mate, in this case, in your in your better self. A sincere interest in your better self. And find something, find a reason, look around, continue looking. You might not know for a year what that reason is, but you have to begin looking for that, that reason. And then again, begin to create these small uh, micro checklists of things you can do every day, of small wins you can have toward your goal. I know your goal is to is to lose 50 pounds. I know that. I know your goal is to fit in your in your high school. Letterman jacket guys or your high school dress girls. I know that. But we can't win that today. What we can win today is I'm going to get up tomorrow and walk for a mile. I'm going to get up uh, on Saturday morning and do 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups. I'm going to do 20 burpees a day for, for two weeks. Whatever it is, right? Writing it down, having a list, and, and winning every day is going to build momentum towards your goal. Keep that goal out there. I'm not saying don't have a goal of losing 20 pounds or whatever it is, but I'm saying that that won't, won't make you move tomorrow. And for sure not on Monday, right? And for sure not in two weeks. What's going to make you move is today I told myself I'm going to do 20 burpees. Bam, 20 burpees done, right? We can do that, all right? So small tips. Uh, I'm going to be with you guys all year. I'm going to try to check in three, four times a day with you with a day three four times a week uh with you guys so uh i know it's not easy guys it ain't easy being great it ain't easy getting better it's it, it, it's easy to be where you're at right and you all have somewhere somewhere in your life where you are great 
right? Maybe in your career, maybe as a parent, maybe as a as a teacher or a sibling or 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 in your community. And so now we need to apply that same success that you have in you towards something you want to do with your health and fitness, right? It's in you. I know you got it. Um, and I'm here to help. Um, so I'm going to check in with you guys three or four times a week throughout the year. If you want more help, I do I do personal coaching uh, where I give you like a, a itemized hour by hour schedule that we kind of go through together. Um, I have a, a boot camp that I do. You can do it virtually now. Um, and, you know, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook. But, you know, it's a, it's a battle and we're all we're all trying to be better. Hey, Kayla, we're all trying to be better every day, you know, and, you know, I'm hopeful that going into going into 2019 that these tips that I've given you guys will help you get further um, than you did last year in 2017 and 2016. And hopefully we can continue getting further and further to the point to where at some point we continue this journey forever. We're always getting better, always improving, always trying to be B-T-Y. All right, guys, uh, that was shorter, I think, than usual. I don't know. Uh, anyhow, uh, love you guys. As always, if you have questions or comments or or tips you want me to, to share with you guys, uh, please request them in this message, and I'll be sure to try to address them uh, next time. All right? Have a good night. I will talk to you guys soon. Love you. Bye-bye.